So the Quran got revealed when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was in his cave of Hira and he heard, he saw a bright light coming to him. The angel of Jibreel came down to him in a form of light and squeezed him three times and told him to read. He kept on saying Ikra, Ikra, Ikra and our Prophet wouldn't know how to read. And then on the last time the Prophet وسلم, said what do I read? And then Angel Jibreel والسلام, said خلق, which means read in the name of Allah. So from then on he was taught and then it's been carried on for years now. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, then taught the people and the people just taught generations to come. And that's the story. Somebody asked me what what the Quran was. I'll just tell them that it's basically the book of answers to all your questions. It's not just a book; it's a re- it's a revelation from the Lord of all worlds. It was the last book given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's basically a guide for the Muslims. If someone were to ask me to give them a definition of what the Quran is, I would say to them that the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa taala to all of mankind that was revealed to his last Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in the time frame of 23 years, its mere recitation is an act of worship and it is impossible for mankind to bring anything like it. In the Quran, he is a doctor of this life and he is a law for all Muslims, but he is a rahmat for the world and he is a doctor of the world and he is a doctor من صحابة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم والتابعين حتى قرأنا القرآن قراءة صحيحة متواترة عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So that's in regards to the definition of the Quran al Karim. What does the Quran mean to you? So the Quran means to me <laughs> such a, such an open question. Um, the Quran means to me, Alhamdulillah, he's the best friend I can fully trust it. He the one show me the right direction to the past to communicate with my God. If I lost, I go to the Quran and find my way and I find whatever I want there. Peaceful of mind, peaceful of heart. It's the shadow of my life. Insha'Allah, until I face my God. So for me, it's it's a personal letter or revelation that Allah sent, and you know I feel that, that, that it's directed towards me. So that's that's what the Quran is. It's my connection with Allah. The Quran is my life. The Quran is everything that I think of. It's my heart. It's my soul. It's my brain. Everything. What is the main message of the Quran? The main message would be like really, really use your life wisely. I would say the main message of the Quran is Tawheed. Basically the message to worship Allah and the fact that Allah is only one. The Quran teaches people to believe in one God and to not associate partners with him. And to do righteous deeds such as salah, zakah, salm. It's telling us that if you 
obey Allah's rules, you if you obey Allah's rules, will or inshallah Allah go to Jannah. It's going to sound very soft, but I feel like the overriding message of the Quran is uh, that Allah is extremely merciful. I, I really feel the more I read the Quran, mercy and forgiveness comes up so much that you can't help but feel the mercy of Allah is is the overriding message. That's my personal um, my personal journey with the Quran. I've really taken that away. The whole Quran is basically educating you about who Allah is. And obviously knowing who Allah is connects you to with every other part of the religion. Once you know who Allah is, that connects you to your prayer, that connects you to your conduct, that connects you to your, the beliefs that you have. So basically the Quran is, is a book from Allah telling you about Allah. You know, the verses of the Quran is for all of humanity and often I'm disappointed that Muslims feel that this is only for them. The Quran is a message that needs to touch the hearts of everyone. To live by the Qur'an is to treat our neighbors kindly, to say a good word, to appreciate and respect the rights of others over us. It's not all about individuals, but it's about the benefit of society, the benefit of mankind. So that's what we hope to achieve with our connection to the Qur'an, to understand our purpose in life, that we are here for a very short journey, and that we fulfill the purpose of that journey by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was living in a suburb that, you know, really there was no Muslims in that suburb at all. And one particular family came and moved to our suburb and they were um, of a Lebanese background. And I was always interested in different cultures. So I started, you know, be befriended the family. And one time I was at their house and I happened to see a copy of the translation of the Quran on their bookshelf. And I basically just asked them, you know, would you mind if I read that? And this is actually a copy of that actual translation that I read all those years ago and that's where my journey all began subhanAllah um, to, to find Islam actually the Quran was what led me to Islam alhamdulillah I start work 5.45 in the morning by myself usually I have cassette put Quran for Sheikh Muhammad Sadiq Minshawi. The boss usually comes six o'clock. I remember the boss that day, he come 5.45 and he entered the control room. You see, I have no chance to turn the radio off. And when I walked to turn it, he said, no, no, stop, stop. Don't touch it. He go there and he start listen. I don't believe what he say. He said, look, he's not Muslim. He, he not understand Arabic. He said, when I hear this voice, I was fully stressful and I, I don't know how I come peaceful, calm down, and this is give me a peace of mind. Even I didn't understand what, what, what he talked what he talking about, just from listening. And this this story is hundred percent true what happened to me. And then one time I was, you know, in a car with a Muslim family and we were going somewhere and I remember hearing this, you know, beautiful sound in the car. And I was just asking them, what's that sound? And they told me, that's the Quran, you know? And I'd only read it in English up until then. But, you know, and then subhanAllah, to think that that was the sound of the Quran when it's recited in Arabic, like it was just amazing, like to think that it had this beautiful, amazing sound, you know, that you listen to, um, which is so different than like with the Bible. It's, you just don't, it's, it's not, it's incomparable, right? And I have to say, to be honest, I have to say this, that I actually had a singing background before becoming Muslim. So anyone out there who has come from that kind of musical kind of background or, you know, a singing background or something like that, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Like you have a different um, sort of sensitivity to the beauty of sound. فالقرآن الكريم سبحان الله وأنا وجدت هذه المواقف في هذا البلد كثيرا ما نقرأ في حضور غير المسلمين فيأتون ويقولون يعني شعورنا بطمأنينة أو سكينة يعني وبعضهم يبكي يعني رأيت الكثير منهم يبكي ولا يدري ما, ما هذا يقول هذا موسيقى ولكن نخبرهم بأنه القرآن والكثير هنا في أستراليا أعتقد أنه شهد إسلام غير المسلمين بسبب سماع آية من القرآن 
وربما هم لم يتدبروها أو يعرفوا يعني معنى هذه الآية ولكن فقط شعروا بهذا النور يا أيها الناس قد جاءكم برهان من ربكم وأنزلنا إليكم Um, so that's why, you know, I was particularly struck by the sound. And I remember after that, you know, I'd always play, in particular, Sheikh Abdul Basit, Abdul Samet, you know, in my bedroom, you know, like I just wanted to listen to the words, like even though I did not understand a thing, but I just wanted to hear the sound of the Qur'an. It's just, it had an amazing impact on myself. Whether you understand the Qur'an or not, whether you're Muslim or not Muslim, it still has a profound impact on people. This is because it has come from the Lord of the worlds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he knows his creation the human being an important aspect of the human being is these emotions that he has this heart that he has the Quran al-Kareem is a remedy for this heart for the ailments of this heart it gives you comfort it gives you tranquility in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding the Quran that we reveal that which is a remedy and a healing and a mercy to the believers <laughs> القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين. If anyone read Quran by his brain and heart. He gonna be emotional because the God said, "لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله." If this Quran come on a mountain, the mountain won't stand there. It gonna be, it gonna be uh, finished. So we are a human being, and the God give us the help, give us the power that we read Quran. Sometimes we have some feeling this come this. This benefit from the God to show you you are on the right path. You know, it's, it doesn't always come, but sometimes when it does come, it's just, you know, an indescribable feeling. And I, I've realized that it actually comes to you more often uh, when you have a better understanding of what, what it's meaning. So, you know, the, your understanding of, of the Arabic of the Quran, your understanding of the, the meanings, once you've delved a little bit into tafsir, you appreciate it so much more. And that, that, that feeling comes to you because you're like, wow, you know, I've read this ayah a you know, hundred times, but. I never thought of it that way and it's, wow, it's like mind blown. I don't understand it all, but when it gets to a word that I really understand and it sinks in my heart, it takes me a long time to go to the next word or next ayah and I just feel like I'm in Jannah. I really do because understanding the words that you, you've learned and you understand it, you just, it's, it's a, just a different taste, it's a different feeling. I remember Surah al duha that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent that surah at a particular time in the Prophet sallallahu life when he was experiencing great difficulty. Of course, his people rejected him. He had lost his wife Khadija alayhi salam. He had lost his uncle Abu Talib. You know, we read Surah Al-Duha without thinking about what it means. But if we understand the context of its revelation and how that can you know, resonate with us during difficult times for the Muslim community or for us on a personal level, we need not despair of the mercy or the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is always with us. Can you read now Surah Al-Qasas? Verse number 55. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa idha sami'u allah wa a'radu anhu wa qalu lana a'maluna wa lakum a'malukum. 
ولكم أعمالكم سلام عليكم لا نبتغ الجاهلين سورة الأحزاب verse 45 يا أيها النبي إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا سورة طه 73 سورة طه 73 إنا آمنا بربنا ليغفر لنا خطايانا وما أكرهتنا وما أكرهتنا عليه من السحر والله خير وأبقى ما شاء الله The miracle of memorizing the Quran is uh, is truly wondrous You find that uh, people from a very young age memorize the whole Quran from cover to cover meticulously there's over 6,000 verses in the Qur'an. Uh, to be able to memorize all of that is truly a miracle. One of the miracles that Allah gave to this Ummah is that He's put in our hearts the love for the Qur'an. He's put in our hearts the love for our scripture. The love that the Muslims have for the Qur'an is not the same as other religious groups have for their scripture. And the proof of this is that the Qur'an is still in its original form. Uh, it's memorized by millions of people. There's no other book. There's never been a book in the history of humanity that has been memorized and preserved in the way that the Quran has. Doesn't matter which corner of the world you go to, you will find Muslims memorizing, preserving, and reciting the Quran in the same way that it was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Jibreel, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I started studying Quran when I was in Somalia at a young age and it was the proper culture at the time. Children will start age of three, age of four, and they will learn the writing of the Qur'an, the Osmanic script, not the normal Arabic writing. In Mauritania, we came across a couple of the students of the Qur'an, and they, they would memorize the Qur'an on wooden board, if you want to call it. They call it Allah in Arabic. They would write the page of the Qur'an that they would memorize, and then they would memorize it. And then when they finish memorizing this page and making it very strong, it becomes so strong that they don't need it anymore. They, they basically wash it off this, um, the, law, the, the board that they memorized. So obviously there are different ways of memorizing the Quran. In the West, Mauritania and uh, Morocco, this is how they do it. ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى تنزيلا ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلى. So after I had, you know, become Muslim, I had the opportunity to meet a few people had, who had memorized the Quran. And when I met them, the idea just instantly came into my heart that I want to do that too. Um, I didn't know how I was going to do that. I remember telling one sister, actually an Arabic-speaking sister, when I was only like, you know, in my early 20s, I was telling her, I want to memorize the Quran by the time I'm 30. And she actually laughed at me. Actually, the way I started memorizing the Quran in the very beginning, many of you may have seen copies of the, the Quran that have the transliteration in them. Right? So I couldn't read Arabic in the beginning, but I wanted to memorize. So I used to write out that, copy out that transliteration and then write the English underneath until I became very familiarized with the Arabic script and I slowly moved on to the Arabic script and started memorizing from that. Um, but after having taken 20 years to memorize it, I, I kind of can see why now she, she found it quite you know, incredulous that I'm, you know, I had that goal. Um, but look, I just was very determined. I really, I made it my goal that inshallah, ya Rabbil Alameen, I want to I wanna die with this, this, this Qur'an in my heart. Do you want to finish the whole Qur'an? Yeah. And why do you want to finish the whole Qur'an? Um, I want to get the ajr of like memorizing the whole Qur'an because um, on the Day of Judgment, my parents will have crowns on their heads unlike some other parents. I want to try and finish the Qur'an and then I want to be able to teach it because um, the Prophet said 
خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه. The best of you are those who learn the Quran and then teach it. Yeah, so min fadlillahi ta'ala, actually four of my kids have memorized the Quran. Uh, my, my eldest, Jamal, alhamdulillah, he finished when he was 14. I've got two sons that have memorized the Quran. I've got six other more children. Alhamdulillah, I'm a hafiz of the Quran and I've memorized it almost three years ago. I memorized the Quran in 2018. Alhamdulillah. The Quran was my life with my kids. We go to school 20 minutes, we memorize. We come from school 20 minutes, and it was something that I really enjoyed. From the time that my children were born, I had the Quran read to them. I would read and I would have a CD player on for them to listen to the Quran, to familiarize themselves with the articulation of the Arabic language. First, first Arabic Quran school, it was in this garage in Australia, maybe 40, 40 years ago. I get all my children and the three children, about 19 of them, and I make a school for them here. I teach them Quran and Arabic in this garage here. From a young age, I always go to the mosque with my grandfather and my dad. And so even though I memorize the Quran, I feel like most of the credit has to go to my dad because he's the one that showed me how to do things, when to do things, and why we do things. It was my dad's kind of like, you know, dream, I could say for me to become a Hafiz. And of course, you know, the importance of becoming a Hafiz, um, you know, entering Jannah and living according to the Quran was, inshallah, the most important point of becoming a Hafiz. How does that make you feel when you look at your children and they can read the Quran? I, I, I'm very proud, very proud, said, Alhamdulillah, I put the seeds and the seeds now make a tree, and the tree make fruit now, so the birds can eat, people can eat, you know. Everybody get benefit from the good thing. I am the proudest mother in the whole world, and I think I am the happiest mother in the whole world. Having my two boys and my girls, alhamdulillah, uh, I think my life is complete. If they would give me a million dollars, millions of dollars, or they tell me I own Australia, Kileta, or you teach your kids the Quran, I would say teach my kids the Quran. I'm very proud of them. You know, for me, the greatest joy is, for example, listening to them as an adult, you know, going about their daily life, you know, reciting the Quran wherever they go, whether in their car or at home. I think to me that, that gives me the greatest joy, just knowing they've got that for life. You know, you've given your kids this Quran you know, subhanAllah, for them to have for, the, for their life. Al-Imam al-Shatabi, he says in his poem, he says, glad tidings to your parents. On them, on the Day of Judgment, will be malabisu anwarin min al wal hula, illuminating clothes of uh, a cloak and, and a crown. Then he says after that, فَمَا ظَنُّكُمْ بِالنَّجْلِ عِنْدَ جَزَائِهِمْ So what do you think the reward will be for the one who actually memorized the Qur'an? When I first went to Turkey, um, I didn't know much. Uh, I only knew just Anna, and I didn't really like how uh, the process of my uh, recitation. I had days where um, I would cry because I can't do a page. And you know, not seeing your family for a month or so was very tough as a kid, as a, as a child. You've just got to be ready for to go through that process, but like it is so worth it. You know, if you can just get over that initial stage, yes, it's a lot of hardships and you might feel frustrated sometimes, but be in there, just always remember that the amount of reward that inshallah you're going to get, it will never be lost with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole journey of memorizing the Quran, it's like, you know, the Mus'haf, the Quran becomes your, like your best friend. Wherever you go, the Qur'an goes with you. You know, you're holding your mushaf wherever you go, from class to home. So realistically, if you want to memorize the Qur'an, I can say you need to be able to find at least one or two hours in your day, every day, to sit, you know, and memorize and, and revise. That's the reality. So you need to be committed to do that. I can assure you my own journey with the Qur'an was not without struggles. I embarked on the journey to attain certification to teach the Qur'an and I thought I'd complete the journey in one year. And during that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with three more children in very close time to each other. So for each of us, the Qur'an is our personal journey. And ultimately, what does Allah look at? 
to, when He rewards us, it's our ikhlas, you know, our sincerity, and also, you know, how much we've strove to, you know, to um, achieve that particular goal. Even in that, and once we, you know, purify our intention that we are doing this solely for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, to get closer to Him, then you know we would succeed. You know, even if we don't complete the journey with the Quran, as long as we are on that path and we start today things will progress inshallah if it takes a year 10 years 20 years let the journey continue i also learned that the level of jannah you will go to depends on how much you've memorized so if you memorize the whole quran then obviously you're going to go to the best type of jannah indeed the reward in the hereafter that is promised for those who memorize the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for those who memorize and act upon it, those who implement. And the first step to that, of course, is uh, to actually understand the meanings of what one is reciting. So they do memorize, but my husband and myself encourage them to understand what they are reading rather than rote memorization. If we are only memorizing for the sake of memorizing, we're not getting the true message. We need to allow those verses to touch our hearts and transform our lives. The Quran, man yaish ma'ahu, yaish fi zulal al Quran, yadabbar al Quran, wa yutabbik al Quran fi hayatihi bi qadr al istata'a, wa kama yakulun yani, aw yasifun ahl al Quran, tajid fihim salah, wa tajidhum yani, ka annam Quran yamshi ala al ard. What that means is that. I try to the best of my ability in all aspects of my life to try and find out what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from me in the Quran al-Kareem and I try to apply that in my life. فتجد هذا الشخص سبحان الله تشعر فيه بصلاح وبأخلاق وتشعر أنك تريد مجالسته وتكون بجواره وتشعر فيه بالصحبة الطيبة حامل المسك. So that's really the process of memorizing. You know, memorizing, but also ensuring that you're understanding, implementing, and then continually thinking and contemplating it to yourself. That's where you get spirituality. That's where you get that connection to the Quran and the connection to Allah. You know, uh, memorizing the Quran, it's a, it's a milestone that... Uh, it's a bit hard to explain, but... Uh, I remember the day where I finished my hafiz. Um, it was uh, very, very emotional, you know, becoming a hafiz after I gave my last page. Uh, my sheikh started to cry, I cried, and it's just a very good feeling. And I remember the day when I finished, where I finished the last, uh, the last surah of the Quran. Yeah, it was, it was very special. It was very special. When I finished the Quran and memorized, the most happiest day was that day, and I still remember because the, the Mu'allim has to be given an animal or value of an animal. And I remember my Mu'allim was given a cow, the value of a cow, not the cow actually. And, and I remember the Mu'allim was making dua for me and saying that you have graduated and uh, I have earned also my, my cow. And I never forget that. And when we go to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is your anticipation from this? I don't know what to say. I just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the highest level of Jannah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows it's our intention. He knows that the goal that what we want in life for me and for my children and for our and I pray that to God that my kids will be role model and be influenced for other people to want to do the same thing so that we all can be in Jannah until in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Allah as much as I love you Ya Allah and I love the Quran that's how I want that's a gift from me for my kids I don't know what to say I'm just lost words just a second The moment I opened the Qur'an, even from the first page that I read, 
Something inside me just said that this is the truth. You cannot deny that, the, that this is the truth. It was so convincing. It was as if Allah was speaking to me directly. Uh, and this is coming from a background of no religiosity at all. Like I, I considered myself an agnostic at the time. Uh, it's, it's just, it's sent by Allah. It is sent by Allah. There's, uh, there's no other explanation. I was once in an interfaith um, dialogue in which the MC was a, a pastor, a minister in the church. A young boy, Hafiz, recited some verses of the Qur'an from memory. Uh, when the boy sat down, the MC got up and he said, he said, we as Christians, when we hear the Qur'an being recited, know that this is not the word of man. This cannot be the word of man. And then he said, it sends shivers uh, up my spine or up our spine when we hear the Qur'an being recited. And this is nothing new. On one occasion, the Prophet ﷺ goes to the Haram, to Mecca, and he begins to recite Surah Al-Najm out loud before everybody. He continues on reciting this beautiful and very powerful in meaning Surah until he reaches the last section of the Surah. The narration it mentions that after the Prophet ﷺ recited this verse, all of the people in the Haram, the believers, with the Prophet ﷺ, with the mushrikeen that were opposed to him, they fell down in sujood before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They couldn't help it. They realized firsthand, they experienced it. It is the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an incapacitates creation from producing anything like it. You cannot imitate the Qur'an. You can't produce something like the Qur'an. And in fact, in three different places in the Qur'an, Allah challenges creation to produce something like the Qur'an. When they couldn't meet this challenge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the challenge a bit more easier. فَأْتُوا بِعَشْرِ سُوَرٍ then at least bring 10 chapters, like the chapters of the Qur'an can. And given that they cannot produce even 10 surah of the Qur'an, he minimizes that challenge to even produce one surah of the Qur'an. And we know that one surah of the Qur'an is as short as just a few words. The shortest chapter is Surah Al-Kawthar. It consists of three verses. In it, there's around 10 words. The scholars, they say even in this short surah, there are six words out of the 10 that are not mentioned anywhere else in the Qur'an except in this surah. That's just another example of the miraculous nature of the Qur'an al karim How do we know the Qur'an is divinely sent from God? Um, how do I know the Qur'an is divinely sent from, from God? In the early or mid-1990s, Australia was very lucky, or the Muslim community was very lucky and fortunate to have a visit by Professor Zaghloul Al-Najjar. SubhanAllah, um, I had the chance to transcribe one of his lectures and I basically memorized um, the scientific miracles that he spoke of when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانَ And it was as if it was an oil painted rose. You know, we didn't know what that meant decades ago, but now we know that when we look up into the sky, the night sky, we can see an oil painted rose in the night sky, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so beautifully described in the Quranic verses. The other verses, of course, was al-bahr um, al-masjur, and the ocean set on fire. And again, when the first people who heard these verses were addressed, they did not know that there were literally fires under the ocean, the magma oozing out of the Earth's crust. And of course, the miracles of the embryo, how it is created, all of those verses confirmed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sent down the Qur'an as a guidance for all of mankind. It's also got some amazing insights into the ancient past. The Qur'an mentions that the people of Abraham worshipped the sun, the moon and a third celestial object. Recent archaeological discoveries have shown that the people of this region did indeed worship an astral triad of the sun, the moon and Venus. Now this knowledge was lost for thousands of years it was only rediscovered recently in the 20th century. 
Chapter 10 of the Quran makes the claim that the Pharaoh of Moses was drowned in the sea and that his body will be preserved as a sign for future generations. Historically, Egyptian priests hid the body of Ramesses II, who was the Pharaoh of Moses, in a secret location until it was rediscovered in the year 1881 CE. Today, the mummy is on display in the Cairo Museum. So, how is it possible that the author of the Quran had access to such knowledge? See, this is like something I, when I started my, of my journey, you know, I always knew, and as a Muslim, this is what you're, you're told. Uh, the Quran is the word of God and it's a linguistic miracle. And it just takes a lot of effort in terms of once you reach a certain level of Arabic and you've tasted Arabic, especially Arabic of outside the Quran, you get a feel for like how the Quran is so different to all other Arabic. One example that the scholars give, they say in one verse of the Quran al Karim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in this one verse, two commands, two prohibitions, and two glad tidings are given. All of these six things are mentioned in just one verse. Now you try put a sentence together, just one sentence that mentions all of those six things, it is very, very hard. And if you are able to, it won't be as eloquent, as beautiful as the Quran al Karim. And then we look at the miraculous aspects of word choice and positioning. For instance, we take Surah Yasin. Allah tells us in Surah Yasin, وَكُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ And every one of them, meaning those celestial objects, the sun, the moon, the earth, and the rest of the objects in the solar system and in the universe, is in its own orbit swimming. If we read from beginning to end, and if we read it from the end to the beginning, it is exactly the same letters. So in this part of the ayah, that message is literally represented visually in order for us to see that floating and orbit and swimming with the letters themselves. So it, it, it's, it's hard to, to describe. You can talk about specific techniques that are used in the Quran and, and, and so forth, but just like the fact that it's, it's a book that I've spent hours and hours on, but there's still so much more and I know that it's an ocean that I can keep diving into. So that's, that, that for me tells me that, you know, this can't just be you know, any, any book or it's, it's, not, it's not the word of man.